Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm going to be creating a new series in which I teach Adobe Photoshop. Now I'm going to be going over the basics of Photoshop through this series so that in the future you should have a good enough understanding of Photoshop to be able to look up any tutorial or effect that you have in your mind and be able to follow that tutorial comfortably understanding the key aspects of Photoshop. Sort of like how I did my Adobe InDesign course. So then, this is a really, really neat program. Uh, Adobe Photoshop is kind of crucial in a lot of different aspects of design creation. Whether you're creating a printed document in InDesign, a video in Premiere Pro and After Effects, or web design sort of things, creating assets in Photoshop is really important. And of course, it's a great editor to just edit photos in general as well. That's its main purpose, but it can be used in all those other ones. So even if you're in a completely different field like web design or video work, understanding Photoshop I feel is really important because it has some effects and features that make asset creation really, really easy and high quality so that when you bring them into whatever field you're going into, you can create some beautiful looking sort of stuff. So yeah, that's, that's its really importance. Um, this first tutorial, I'm going to be going over just the basics of Photoshop. So I'm not going to be diving really in depth to anything. If you understand the very basics, you know, what you're going to be looking at, the screens, the layer panels, stuff like that, then jump into the next tutorial where I'm going to be actually diving into one of the aspects. If, however, this is your first time opening it or you've only ever used other Adobe programs or anything like that, then continue on this tutorial and sort of get a good understanding of what Photoshop is, how it's presented, and what the different buttons uh, that you're presented with right away look like and do. So let's get started. I'm just gonna click this new button right here um, and that's gonna create ourselves a new project. Now you'll notice that I have a bunch right here and these are my recents. So this is the stuff I've been working on. You can see my thumbnails are created in here um, and some different works that I've just been sort of editing. So if you've created a bunch of different works in here, you can click on it and get into them really easily, which is really awesome. However, if you haven't, you wanna hit this new button and if they aren't in the recents or you don't wanna create a new one, you can click the open button to go find it on your device. So I'm gonna click new, and we'll pre be presented with this window right here. And this basically right here, just it's choosing the custom, um, they're the presets over here. So these are the stuff I've worked with in the past, and it remembers that. So maybe if I create 500 by 500 at 300 PPI, um, stuff often I don't have to keep re-entering it in. I can just click on it and it'll do all that for me. But let's go, let's start here and let's move some stuff around. First off, we need to give it a good title. Make sure your title goes with what it actually is. Um, this is just important because a lot of times I've created assets that I want to use again later, like maybe two or three months later, and I've given them stupid names, and I can't find them on my desktop. They're somewhere on my computer, but I can't find them because how else are you going to find it without being able to search its name if you don't understand the file architecture of where you put it? So understand that give it a good name, and it'll help you a lot in the future. Next, we have width and height. And this is just the width and the height of the artboard of the piece of work that you're creating, like in Premiere Pro or anything where, you know, 720p, 1080p, except in Photoshop, you might have some weird variations like a square image or something like that. So you want to be able to enter these in, in any dimension you want. If you don't want to work with pixels, you can work with inches, centimeters, millimeters, depending on how you want to work with it. If you're doing print work, inches and centimeters might be more important to you than pixels. If you're doing web work, pixels are probably the most important thing to work with. So I'm just going to go with a square of 500 by 500. Resolution is how high def it is. Higher definition, higher file size, lower definition, lower file size. There's, you know, of course a happy median with whatever you're working with. So kind of look that up and figure it out. Um, 300 is usually deemed high definition where anything uh, lower than that is, you know, lower than, lower definition. Higher than that is extremely high definition and might be there. I don't think any monitors could even see past that except for maybe like 4k retina display stuff like that so you want to just kind of keep this somewhere between like 100 and 300 and look up sort of what the dimensions are at the time of watching this because i'm sure in a year or two the higher resolutions will be in the 500s or 600s or something like that color mode is how the colors are going to be represented so rgb is red green blue and that is what pixels are represented by so everything on your monitor right now is rgb combinations of red, green, and blue to create whatever effects you are looking at. Well, CMYK is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and that is for print work. So choose accordingly. And then bits is how big the range of the colors are. So it's two to the whatever the bit is, is how many colors in that certain shade you have. So for example, um, two to the eight bits would be how many different colors of orange you could get, while two to the 16th is a whole lot more than that. Two to the 32nd is a whole lot more than that. So 
again, more bits, more data size, but under, um, and more quality. But there can be some caveats, like if you're working online, you don't want to be in like 32 bits or anything like that because load times are important. Down here we have the background contents and it's going to give us just an initial start, a white background or a black background. And then advanced options, we don't need to touch those right now because we only need to touch those if we feel like actually editing them and we'll know if we need to edit those. So let's go ahead and hit this create button and you'll see that we're be we are presented with this beautiful little design right here. What we have in the center is our artboard, what we're working with. This square is our artboard and the area on the outside is just sort of workspace. It's not gonna be represented unless we're put onto this workboard right here. Over here we have layers and also a bunch of different things like panels. Um, so Adobe programs are very focused on panels which are mixable and matchable sort of things that can be moved around and they provide a bunch of different features. You can open up more and more panels by going into Windows and all these things with checkboxes are currently being repre represented somewhere. But if you want something like a histogram, we can click on the button and it opens up a histogram right here and we can use it to look at it with a histogram. Now understanding that these are completely mixable and matchable is also important so we can create our own little panels here we can drag them anywhere we want you'll see that like we just created ourselves an entire another row we can you know detach this whole thing and you know we want to move it around like this we want it over here instead of attached to the side so we can move the the size around you know it's very customizable to how you want to work if I go up here to window, workspace, we're in essentials right now, I can hit reset essentials and it's gonna reset it back to the default. Um, libraries is always open, I like to delete that because I don't actually use the libraries that often and it takes up a lot of space. Um, there are a bunch of different workspaces up here so you might be in another one of these and basically what these are is you click on them, it's gonna rearrange all the panels and the views so that it is best suited for whatever it says. So if you're working in 3D, it's gonna rearrange it for 3D stuff. Um, like with the 3D layer sort of prominent here, gonna rearrange the tools, stuff like that. So we're just gonna work with essentials right now because it's the essentials, it's the basic where you might start. Next thing that's important is the layers tab down here. Layers are just different elements being put on top of each other. Think of them almost like stickers, where if you put a bunch of stickers on top of each other, they are all going to be represented in here. And if you had a bunch of like piece stickers, like stickers like let's say a puzzle piece and you put them all together perfectly it might look like one big sticker and that's kind of how this is going to work is that when you create different layers and move stuff around you're going to create these stickers and these effects that are all going to go on top of each other to create your final image and then when you render it out or export it or save it whatever you want to call that um, it's going to condense those all down to one image one sticker that you can put anywhere and you can load onto web pages and stuff like that if we want to create ourselves a new layer, we can click this little button right down here and it creates a new layer just like that. You can also go up here, layer, new, layer, just like that. On the left side, we have our tools and we'll be going more in depth with that a little bit later in another tutorial. But these are just basically the things that you can manipulate the artboard with. So for example, if I clicked on this button down here, I can draw something and you see that it created a rectangle. Um, as an object right here. So, you know, I've just created and it also attached it as a layer. And, you know, I can do different things. Like if I, I can do different filters to it, I can distort it, I can ripple it, I can shear it, and it's gonna want me to convert to a smart object, which I'll explain a little later. But I can add sort of these objects. And let's just go over a smart object really quickly. Whenever we, gr we draw these things, um, they have certain characteristics to it. And these certain characteristics can't be manipulated unless they're transitioned into this object called a smart object. So yeah, they're very kind of a little bit more complicated, but just understand that if it asks you to convert it to a smart object, it's just saying, I can't do the effect you're asking me to do right now unless I convert it into a different data type. And if you click OK, it's going to do that. You're going to lose certain functionality and you're going to gain certain functionality. Also understand that the layers can be deleted and moved around, but one must always relate remain in the layer panel, not one layer, one object. So if I create a group right here, you can see I can drag everything down here into the trash can. Uh, this one is locked, that's our background. If we unlock it, it makes it a layer and we can drag that into the trash can. But if we have one left, it cannot be deleted. So yeah, just remember that one group or layer must remain and sometimes it won't let you delete things uh, due to this fact. Up here we have sort of the different controllers file has stuff like saving your image, exporting your image out. If you click export as, 
um, closing the image, opening up different images, browsing for images, stuff like that. In edit, we have different features that sort of move in the direction of editing Photoshop, but it has a couple of layer specific editing like transform, which is going to be making things larger, smaller, moving them around, stuff like that. Image, sort of, we're going to be manipulating the image as a whole. This is a great place to find image size and canvas size. So this is your canvas. The image can be a different size. If you have um, an image in here, you can click on it and you can manipulate the image size or you can manipulate the whole viewport itself. Uh, so this is important if you want to change what you've created. So if I go up here into pixels, you see it's 500 by 500. But if I make this, for example, 450, proceed, you'll see that it changes it and it'll clip anything that's in there. Uh, layer is for manipulating layers, creating layers, and stuff like that. Type is for, um, type in this situation is font uh, text. They name it type, so you can add font kits. Um, you can change around, so if we open up the character panel right here, it's just all things having to do with text and manipulating text. Filter is just a bunch of different effects. That's kind of how they name them here, is filters. So you can go in and you can find the filter that changes things and how you want it to be. There's a ton of them, so they're all used to be mixed and matched in different ways, and that's sort of how you start learning the program, is understanding how the filters work. So just understand, they're all in here and they're can be used either by themselves or with a bunch of different others to accomplish an end goal effect. 3D is how you affect the different 3D elements of something. View is just um, sort of how the program is being displayed to you. So if we want to add the rulers onto the side, we can go view and click on rulers. And then, you know, there's stuff for like editing guides, which are these things that you can drag out so that you can lock things and make sure everything's all aligned with one another. So yeah, that's basically it on the basics of Photoshop. I'm not going to go any farther in this tutorial just because I kind of want to break these up into really uh, sort of specific um, tutorials so that people don't have to, you know, wait really, really long in one tutorial to get to the other things. So yeah, this is the basics, kind of what you're introduced to and how the whole program sort of flows together. Uh, later tutorials, I'm going to cover some more advanced things, so look out for those and yeah, it'll be really, really good to jump into that sort of stuff. Thanks everyone for joining me for this tutorial. If you got any questions or comments or areas of Photoshop that you want to see, go ahead and leave those in the comments below. Uh, if you want to see more videos similar to this one, more Adobe related content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I make videos every other day. And until next time guys, see ya.